What's up everybody, Jeremy here from mtgheadquarters.com with yet another amazing box brought to you by the wonderful people at mtgcardmarket.com. This is the last product that I have from them on the core set, but they have set me up so I can keep doing Sealed Saturday for a while for you guys. So if you get a chance, you should check them out. I'll put the link in the description below. Let's get cracking. As you guys know, my uh, official booster box was pretty insane. If you haven't seen it yet, you know, this will be part of my uh, M15 playlist. So you're going to want to check that baby out. I've still not opened a Jace. I have not opened an Ajani. I don't know what Nissa's is at anymore at the time of this filming. But, uh, she was pretty spicy at launch. She's like a $30 planeswalker at launch. But, this is not launch anymore. And every day more Nissas are getting open. Every day more M15s being opened. So we're gonna just go through this as per usual. We have Curd Chieftain. Cone of Flame, Belligerent Sliver, and our first rare is Waste Not. Fan design card. Whenever an opponent discards a creature, put a 2 2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, get two swamps. When they discard a non creature, non land card, draw a card. Pack number two. So, how have all your release day events and Everything Ben. I'm assuming this will be coming out after the dust settles a little bit. Maybe in the middle of the second week. What have you guys been noticing in draft? Meteorite. Endless Obedience. Circle of Flame. And Shield of Avatar. Uh, if a source would deal damage to equipped creature, prevent X of that damage or X of the number of creatures you control. Do, 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 do. So I wonder how these cards from this set will affect standard. What do you think we'll see play? What has seen play? We have Nightfire Giant. Staff of the Mind Megas. Mind Megas! Wall of Limbs. And Obnixilis Unshackled. Six mana, four, four with flying and trample. Whenever an opponent searches his or her library, that player sacrifices a creature and loses 10 life. This card's going to be fun in some constructed decks. When another creature, when other than, uh, nah, when another creature dies, put a 1-1 counter on Obnixilis Unshackled. That's going to be a fun card on kitchen tables across America. Um, I don't know if it's used to play anywhere else. I'm getting better at standard stuff, but or other constructed formats, and I can see that that card would be very fun in some decks. Hot soup here! Roaring, Roaring Primadox, Geist of the Moors, and Colonian Twin Grove, hashtag value, six mana. Uh, its power and toughness is equal to the number of forests, and when it enters the battlefield, put a green tree folk warrior creature token onto the battlefield with the same specs. Oh, and our first foil is a Gather Courage. Do, 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 do. We have a Tormod's Crypt. Constricting Sliva. Oh, shoot. Dissipate and our rares in Garrick's Wake. Nine mana. Destroy all Planeswalker, all creatures you don't control, and all Planeswalkers you don't control. It's nine mana, though. It's nine mana dough. That mana cost dough. Staff of the Flame Megas. First response. Paragon of Eternal Wilds. And Preeminent Captain. The card that I pull more than anyone else on the planet. 2-2 two, two first strike. Whenever it attacks me, put a soldier creature 
from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Seems good. We have a foil Boon Weaver Giant. Looks awesome in foil. Very cool. I like the new finish on the cards too. It's definitely a different finish. They feel a little smoother. A little glossier, maybe. Satiny. Dauntless River Marshal. Boon Weaver Giant. Wall of Frost. And we have a Soul of Ravnikar. First Mythic. Six mana, six, six flyer. Pay seven, draw a card for each color among permanents you control. That card stinks. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say that. I take it back. No cards stink. They're all good in their own ways. In their own situations. Bloodhost. Staff of the Death Magus. Nissa's Expedition. And Life's Legacy. Two mana, sorcery. Um, if this is instant speed, this card would be amazing. Sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to that creature's po power. Imagine this with uh, Phyto Titan, right? Uh, pay two, draw seven cards, and it returns next turn. So, I mean, that's too rare, so your chances of drafting that combo are slim, but, I mean, drawing seven cards in green is pretty dang good. Just saying. I'm talking limited or casual formats. I don't know. There are other creatures with that same effect. Things with Undying, blah, blah, blah. Act on Impulse. Reclamation Sage. Congregate. And Spectre Ward. Five mana. Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature gets two plus two and has protection from all colors. This effect does not remove auras. And with a foil, planes. Yes, Bob, we have a foil planes. Oh, he's just pulled a foil planes. Look at his reaction. <laughs> yeah. Turn to frog. Paragon of Gathering Miss. Any of the paragons are worthy of first picks, I think. Um, but then you're playing kind of that strategy, right? Into the Void. And a rare is Hornet's Nest. Three mana, O2 Defender. Whenever it's self-damage, it poops out a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token with flying and death touch. Poop. Zzz. Do that sound effect every time. Poop. Zzz. Poop. Yes, it's late and I'm tired. <laughs> Paragon of Fierce Defiance. Ancient Silverback. Overwhelm. And Hornet Queen. Oh, it's a buzz, buzz, tacular pull. 2 2, flying death touch. When it enters the battlefield, put four 1 1 green insect creature tokens onto the battlefield with death touch. For seven manners. Seven manners. Mind your manners. It is flavorful. It is costed such that. It will not be played much. Curd Chieftain. Staff of the Death Magus. Staff of the Mind Magus. Return to ranks. X to white. Return X creature cards with converted mana cost of two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If you build around it, you know, it is potential. You could potentially build around it um, in draft, but... You know, I don't know. Gives you a last gasp if you're a, a red-white aggro build, something like that. Ulcerate. Capture Kite Fins. Caustic Tar and a rare. Sliver Hive Lord. Have not pulled this yet. One of each color. 5-5. Five, five. Sliver creatures to control have indestructible. People with Sliver. Oh, and a, a Johnny Emblem. Um, you know, EDH sliver people, you'll be able to find that card available on Amazon.com from TCG headquarters. <laughs> All right. 
Tormod's Crypt, Altic Bloodseeker, Congregate, and Gobble Rubble Master. Rubble, 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 rubble. Three mana, two, two. Other goblin creatures you control attack each turn if able. At the beginning of your combat, on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one red. Goblin creature token with haste on the battlefield. Whenever a goblin rabble master attacks, it gets a plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn for each other attacking goblin. Good in goblins. Probably not terrible in draft. Um, but, I mean, you're not even going to be able to attack with it until turn 4. And it's still only a 2-2. A two, two. So, I don't know. I don't see it being that great in draft. I, again, I have not played it yet, but I don't see it being that good. Gather Courage. Jace's Ingenuity, I see being very good. Sacred Armory. And our rare poo is Obnixilis Unshackled. We already went over that guy. All right. It's weird because... I have not pulled a Jace or a Johnny, and I kind of want them. But at the same time, right now, Nissa's very expensive, and I kind of want to pull her. <laughs> Venom Sliver, Heat Ray, Devouring Light, Premium Removal in this set, and Yabby Maya Coast. Blue Green Painland, and then Oresco Swift Claw. Very good card in an aggressive build. No problem picking that card very highly. So how is M15 going for everybody? Are you already bored with it? Are you ready for cons? Meteorite? Get used to it. It's going to be around for a while. Staff of the Wild Magus. Paragon of Eternal Wilds on a rare is Stormtide Leviathan. 8-8 eight, eight for 8. That we'll see play in, what, Tribal Leviathan and... I mean, if you want to put an 8-drop in your limited deck. I know the format's slow, but it's still an 8-drop. I don't know. It's hard to say. Gargoyle Sentinel. Until I play more of the format. Staff of the Wild Magus. Overwhelm. And <laughs> a Stormtide Leviathan. How about that random randomization? So far been a very pedestrian box, but that's okay. It can all be crazy. Leeching Sliver, Frenzied Goblin, Might Makes Right, and Necromancer Stockpile. Draw a card, draw that, discard a card, draw a card. If discarded card was a zombie, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. I could see that being good in some constructed zombie decks. Seems like a pretty good ability, and you know, zombie decks usually interact with the graveyard anyway. So, there's that. Insole Artifact, everyone's like favorite uncommon, other than like Turn to Frog. Restock. Illusionary Angel. And Frexian Revoker will probably see some sideboard play, maybe more, I don't know. Runs a Betterfield name not online card. Activated abilities of sources with that chosen name can't be activated. So Planeswalkers, things like that. Very good. We have not seen a foil rare yet, so there is still hope. Of the rares in the set, I don't know. I don't really know. It seems like all the values in Mythics. If I remember correctly. Insole Artifact. Staff of the Wild Megas. Necrogen Scudder and Yavi Shivan Reef. Sorry. <laughs> All right. The enemy lands or whatever. Pain lands. People aren't super pumped about them being reprinted, but I don't know. Seems like they always print stuff like that. A Giant's Pride Mate. Totally fine. First pickable, in my opinion. Warden of the Beyond. Quickling. 
and Cruel Sadist. Pay one for a 1-1, one, one, pay one and tap, pay one life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Then you can pay two and a black, tap it, remove X counters, and deal that much damage to target creature. So it's just not, I don't know, it's not that good. I mean, you're basically paying like five life and five turns to kill a five power something. Something that you're actually worried about, you know? I think there are better ways to deal with stuff is all. That's all I'm saying. Dark Steel Citadel. Restock. Profane Memento. And Crucible of Fire. Four mana enchantment dragon creatures to control. Get plus three, plus three. All right, we need something to wake us up. We need a Garrick. Where are my Planeswalkers at, Box? Yo, I'm talking I'm talking to you, Box. Where are my Planeswalkers at? Whoop. Shrapnel Blast. Staff of the Sun Megas. Rogue's Gloves. And Court of Calling. All right. X and three green with Convoke. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost of X or less. Put it down on the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. That's good. It's a good card. Covenant of Blood. Foily. Ooh, so shiny. Hopefully we're getting into a little bit of the sauce here. Court of Calling into Planeswalker. I'm calling it. Venom Sliver. I think it's going to be Garrick. Heat Ray. Jace's Ingenuity. Oh, Phyto Titan. Seven mana, seven two, six mana, seven two. When it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of his or her next upkeep. So again, you know, in a sealed pool, there's... You could combo a bit with that. Find a way to give it trample. It's pretty good. It's all right as a blocker, too. Or just a beater. Dauntless River Marshal. Paragon of Open Graves. Stab Wound. And... Kirkesh Onaki Agent. Four mana, four, three... Whenever you activate an ability of an artifact, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay one red. If you do, copy that ability. You may choose some targets for that copy. You can see that getting broken by somebody, or it's already broken. I don't know. All right, Dark Steel Citadel. Gravedigger. Might makes right. Sliver Hive. Tap for one to your mana pool. Tap at one mana of any color. Your mana pool spends only mana only to cast a sliver spell. So you could play like four of these and play like your sliver queen or, or sliver overlord, blah, blah, blah. Uh, pay five, tap, put a one, one colorless sliver creature token on the battlefield. Activate this ability only if you control sliver. I think slivers in standard are just like mill in standard. It's just never gonna be. Uh, there's just never gonna be everything we need for it. Juggernaut, Diffusion Sliver, Feral Incarnation, and Polymorphous Jest. Until end of turn, each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a one-one blue frog with base power and toughness one-one. That is a blowout waiting to happen. We'll probably see all sorts of play. Smattering and standard. Great in draft. Joe Ruby Merc Lurker. Brawler's Plate. Zathrid Skyblade. And Mass Calcify. Destroy all non white creatures. And our rare, foil rare is aggressive mining. Designed by the Minecraft guy, I believe, yeah? Yeah. Marcus P P Pearson, whatever. Four mana, you can't play land, sacrifice a land, draw two cards, activate its ability. Only once each turn. And a squid token. All right, well, we are really holding out for, to get any value out of this box, we need, uh, we need some pretty, we need a really strong finish. <laughs> Sometimes you have boxes like that. Turn to Frog. Cone of Flame. 
Paragon of New Dawns. A second quarter calling. Okay, fine. Fine by me. It's probably only like four or five bucks, but that's okay. That's why they reprint stuff. Because it's a card people needed, and it wasn't, you know, 20 to $30. It was too expensive. Broodkeeper. Paragon of New Dawns. Quickling. Oh, good. Soul of New Phyrexia. That's a very strong pull, too. 6-6 six, six, Trample. I think it's the only soul that's worth anything, probably because it's an artifact. Pay 5 permanent to control, gain indestructible on a turn. That's also very good. Uh, pay 5, exile it, and you can give them. So you get, like, one last hurrah. All right, so that's solid. Two quarter callings and a soul of New Phyrexia, like I think out of our last five packs. That's very good. I'd love to see any, any Planeswalker. Wall of Mulch. Back to nature. Uh-oh. Battle Mastery. And Siege Dragon. Pre-release 5-5 five, five Flyer. When it has Battlefield, destroy all walls. Whenever it attacks, it deals 2 damage to each creature without flying. That player controls. Oh, we have a Foil Shaman of Spring. Whew. I'm hitting that wall of magic where I always kind of, whenever a new set comes out, it's so crazy. Here pumping out videos and talking about it and pre-releasing and I'm getting kind of to that point where I need to take a little break and that's okay because magic will be there for me. Sunblade Elf, Nightfire Giant, Belligerent Sliver, Resolute Archangel, 7 mana 4-4, four, four. when it enters the battlefield, your life, if your life total is less than your starting life total, it becomes equal to your starting life total. That card is interesting. I beat it in pre-release. Somebody restored all the way to 20, and I still beat them. And they were at like 4 when they did it. So there's that. It's not unbeatable. Wall of Essence. Leeching Sliver. Wall of Frost. Spirit Bonds. A very value a card that just exudes value, right? Uh, this is another guest design card, I think, too, but I don't know the guy. Um, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one white. If you do, put a 1-1 spirit creature token with flying out of the battlefield. Pay one and a white. Sacrifice the spirit. Target non-spirit creature gains indestructible till end of turn. And a foil meditation puzzle. All right, we are down to the last two packs, and I'm hoping you're out there willing for some sick pulls. But if you're new to the channel, as I know, every time a new set comes out for Magic, there's a ton of new players. Now is the time to subscribe. I've got tons of giveaways. I've got guest appearances coming on the channel with uh, artists. And just there's just so much going on that you don't want to miss any of it. And again, thank you to the guys at mtgcardmarket.com. Their link is in the description. But check out their website after the video. You know, check them out for yourself. I know they're going to be at uh, several events. They always they have a booth at a lot of events that they buy cards and they have a very strong buy list and uh, I like dealing with them. Staff of the Flame Megas, Flame Megas, Stab Wound, Zothard Skyblade, Goblin Kaboomist. One two at the beginning of your upkeep, bulk of your shoe. Oh wait, put a colorless artifact creature token named Landmine on the battlefield with one red. Sacrifice this artifact. This artifact deals two damage to target attacking a taken creature without flying. Then flip a coin. If you lose a flip, Goblin Kaboomus deals two damage to itself. Last pack. All right. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Feast on the Fallen. Seraph of the Masses. Stoke the Flames, as spoiled by MTG Headquarters. And Genesis Hydra. Fine. A fine pull. When you cast Genesis Hydra, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost of X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle the rest into your library. Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield X. 1-1 one, one counters on it. The Boxing Review. 
you know, Genesis Hydra is something. Um, Soul of New Phyrexia, Court of Calling, Foil Aggressive Mining, maybe. Probably not. Sliver Hive. Another Court of Calling, very good. Shivan Reef, fine. You have my coast. Got the Ajani emblem, but no, uh, we got the Sliver Hive Lord, that's good. Bunch of Hornet stuff. Soul of Ravnica. Was this a no Planeswalker box? Yeah, not a single Planeswalker. There's like five in the set, we didn't pull a single one. That is sad. That makes me a sad panda. But that's okay. That's the risk you take when you open up packs, and that's why I do it, so you don't have to waste your money. So I hope you've already subscribed. If not, do it now, please. And make sure to crush that thumbs up button right below the video. It helps spur me on to pump out new videos. And we'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.